Welcome back, Terrifics. I'm Michael Arts is here live in downtown Las Vegas, and we are having a lot of fun at Bay Terrific TV on all social media. Who loves Knight Rider? I love Knight Rider. You love Knight Rider. You remember Knight Rider with David Hasselhoff? He was Michael Knight. He had this really awesome car that was called Kit. It was a, a Firebird, and it was unbelievable. Talk to him. And he talked to it, and it did all sorts of cool things. Well, in 2008, they brought the series back to TV, and they had a new take on Kit. Ted is here, and Ted joins us with his own version of Kit from that 2008 show. I believe this starts life as a Shelby GT500 Mustang, right. about 500 horsepower, 550 horsepower, something like that? Roughly about 500 horsepower. It was a GT500 KR, and KR wasn't for Knight Rider. It was for King of the Road. That is correct. Right. This was the reboot of the uh, series, and it also uh, had um, Justin Bruning and also Deanna Russo in it. Uh, Hasselhoff was in the pilot, but then he wasn't in the regular series. Walk me through what you've done to the car. So first of all, if we walk to the front, and I'm going to give Adam a hard time here and make him move, uh, we probably should have started here. Um, you've got the LED lights, which yes. are really Kit's calling card. I mean, Kit started... Uh, with that Firebird, and or was it a Trans Am? It was a Trans Am uh, they used, and uh, I just corrected myself. <laughs> uh, it was a Trans Am, which was basically a Firebird with yes. a, a little bit of different body trim. Or high performance was a Trans Am, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Kit back then only had one swoosh back and forth, uh, but on the 2008 they went with the double. Basically, that's Kit's heartbeat. Uh, that's why it's red, for blood. Very cool. Now, normally these are air dams, so did you have to block the air intakes here? Uh, yes, I did. I uh, had to cut out everything uh, underneath, had to uh, make holes for the lights to go into. Does it affect the uh, airflow of the car and the way the car can breathe? Actually, no, because there's big enough opening on the front grill, on the bottom grill. Uh, there's plenty there. It's, it, it's like it's not even blocked. Right, and you, you feel this was more stylistic from Ford and, and Mustang than it was actual functional? Yeah, I I think uh, it was more uh, style than the function on there. Now, I've driven a, a new Mustang recently, yeah. and I've been very impressed. It handles a lot better than they ever have. Uh, they're faster than ever. They're more comfortable than ever. And uh, so I think it's good to, you know, have this car based uh, on not the newest generation, but the previous generation, where they've made a lot of the changes they have today. Yeah, I mean, uh, the new ones are nice, and they're very comfortable. But to me, I like this body style. I'm not really a fan of the brand new ones, but this one here uh, handles well. Well, it's very aggressive, it's, and, it, and this really harkens back to the Mustangs of the 60s, which everybody loves. Um, but certainly, the new ones are great. This one is also great, but what I was saying is this handles almost as well as those. So it's a good car to have as a base, as opposed to taking a car from the 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s. The 80s and 90s were really the, the dark days of Mustang. Yeah, they, they, they weren't the greatest cars. I had a few uh, Camaros and stuff, and. Uh, I mean, this one handles so much better uh, performance-wise and aerodynamics and handling is so awesome on this. How many cars do you have, by the way? Uh, right now, only two cars. This one, uh, this is actually my daily driver. I drive this every day. You uh, get a lot of looks, huh? Oh, a lot of looks. And uh, we drive it all the way from Chicago, uh, about 2,000 miles. Here? Yes. Wow. We've done that five times. Um, we have fun with it. Uh, on the road, we put the lights on and everything. We stop for gas or something, and you know, and people have got to take pictures of it and everything. Oh, I bet. Let can we take a uh, look inside? I believe. Um, so wait, uh, was this part of the uh, show, um, or or did you put these on? No, these are actually the way the car sets is almost identical to the show, except for a couple small features on the outside. Are those functional? Those are those they are hood locks. Functional. They are locks on there. Yes. Uh, I might have to ask you to unlock those in a minute. You've got cross-drilled uh, rotors. Um, was that part of the show as well? Um, actually, no. That's part of the KR? That's part of the KR, and also it's, it's what I wanted to do with the car. Um, it handles a lot better. Braking is a lot better with the vehicle. Um, I've upgraded the sus suspension on it. I've noticed you've replaced the steering wheel. Is that the steering wheel from the show? Yes, um, it is. It it's, is. It's the uh, steering wheel from the show. Uh, of course, then you have the orb, the under the dash lights, like how kit. How do you get away without having an airbag, just out of curiosity? Uh, I just pray every time I drive the car that I don't get into an accident. There you go. I hope that that happens too, that you don't get into an accident. And then uh, 
you know, obviously you can pass inspection without an airbag? Uh, Illinois, unfortunately, we don't have an inspection for that. Wow, that is wonderful. Uh, for you, I mean, not really in general. <laughs> um, all right, so tell me everything you've got in the car. You've got the Momo steering wheel, which is great. You've got the special shift knob, um, and you've got the orb. And tell me about the orb. Uh, the orb is the actual running orb. Uh, I had the graphics ran by a 160-gig computer in the trunk. Uh, it actually has the graphics from the show. Uh, unfortunately, right now, it don't talk. It doesn't talk in Val Kilmer's voice. I'm working on that. Uh, but it does run, it does have the graphics. Can we see it or is it sure. too bright out? Um, no, if you sit inside the vehicle. Okay, maybe I'll sit inside first and then maybe get Adam to sit inside. Oh, wow. Wow, that is pretty cool. And how did you figure out how to do this? Well, I had a gentleman, uh, he uh, came up with the idea with the, with the graphics and everything and uh, basically we put it into a computer and run it so i have a computer pc in a trunk how'd you mount that in the trunk um just underneath with the speakers this guy's cooler than me he mounted a computer in a car <laughs> can we do that guys can we get an editing system mounted in the car oh, that would be cool this guy has mounted ted has mounted a computer in the car what other you've gotten the blue uh the blue lights the throughout blue dash lights yeah is exactly how kit had his and then he had a pioneer uh oh, no, navigation he, that's that's just had, for your comfort that's for my comfort yeah and yeah. gps <laughs> And uh, the cool thing is my GPS on my uh, Pioneer radio actually sounds like Val Kilmer. Wow. And uh, I didn't plan that or anything. Well, so what, what made you do this car? What made you fall in love with uh, Knight Rider? You know, when, when, when I was younger, um, I had a Camaro, and I didn't care for the Trans Ams. And Kit was actually a Trans Am, but I loved Kit. I, you know, I'm the same way. I never cared for the actual car, which is why I don't know if it's right. a Firebird or a Trans Am. But I, I loved Kit. I just... Oh, I, ne I, I didn't even think that car was attractive. It, yeah, you know, and, and I felt the same way about my Camaro uh, because basically they were the same body style. Uh, we're, we had a, a red torch uh, Mustang at the time when the show was on, and I told my wife, I said, you know, I would love to build a kit. And she's like, oh, go for it. So we went and traded uh, the torch red in for this one here, and we just started the process of, uh, of building it. Uh, we bought it in 09. Um, there's still things that we want to do to it and everything. But, um, you know, it's come a long way, and we have a lot of fun with it. All right. Well, let's – can we peek under the hood? Sure. All right. So let's peek under the hood. What's under the steering wheel, by the way? You got – is that just the actually, light cluster? No. Actually, the, the buttons underneath the steering wheel are actually my cruise control because on the old nines, the cruise control was part of the steering wheel. So you moved them. I had to move them because got I it. wanted to keep – and you drive a lot of miles, so you need the cruise control. Exactly. Wow, what do you still want to do to the car? Um, actually, we're going to be doing some repaint on it, uh, redoing the engine to put a supercharger on it, because I love the way the supercharger winds. Um, How much more horsepower are you going to get out of the supercharger? Probably about 125 to 200. <laughs> somewhere in 625. And then also do the interior to be exactly like how Kit was, because he had the red inserts. Wow, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. All right, so the locks, the hood is not automatically, uh, doesn't automatically open with the locks unlocking. He's still got to pop the hood. Oh, I see the paint does need a repaint. It's got a lot of wear from all those miles you put on. How many miles do you have exactly? 112,000 miles. 112,000 miles. Yeah. And uh, here you go. There it is, the U.S.-made Ford engine, and it is powered by Ford. That is what the king of the road looks like. Yep. Um, Pre-supercharger. Pre-supercharger, yep. And once uh, once we get the supercharger in there, uh, more horsepower and a little bit more fun. Sounds good. Well, uh, thank you so much, Ted. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to wrap this up. We'll be back with the Terrifics right after this. But, Ted, I really appreciate your time. I think this is awesome. And uh, thanks for showing us your version of Knight Rider. Thank you very much. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this to wrap it up in a nice bow. Thank you.